Hello everyone, welcome to the summary of episode 20, or stream 22, episode 22 of the summary, as you get the idea. Uh, Lawrence was not around last week, so ha 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 ha, you missed out on all cool stuff. However, Lawrence, we need Terra Steel. That is the theme of the stream. Lawrence, make some Terra Steel. Meanwhile, we've been automating some stuff, so this is the issue. If you can have a look, I've just recorded a For Science video, and this is the problem that I was trying to address in said For Science video. What's happening is, when this crafts a red alloy plate, for example, it goes in here, it goes in here, and then it comes straight out the top after being crafted. So this has made a crafting operation in the computer, which, you know, in the crafting CPU. It's put the thing in the thing, and then when it comes out, it goes straight in this stack. The problem there is that it never actually goes into the CPU and out again. It just goes into the stack, and there it is. So the CPU has no idea that the crafting process is finished. So what we're going to do here, um, I think the, the best way of fixing this is to have an interface that feeds into a chest. And then from the chest, we pull out with a pipe and we can have multiple of these um, machines in a row. And then each of those can export back into the pipes and into another interface, which is not exporting those things like this. So the, com the computer knows that it's got the thing and then it can put it out here again and then this bus here so we've got a storage bus here so this means that the main system knows about the uh, contents of this interface and this uh, with the crafting card means that the interface is crafting the thing so it's a little supply of plates that can be accessed by the storage system there's more up there of course um, for now but this is going to be sort of the the base amount there's always going to be 64 of each of these um, and then if we wanted more, we just do this again with another interface on another side. And when we've got the chest, we can put the interface on another side of that chest and it will just scale up that way. Easy peasy. Uh, here's a bunch of water buckets that I tried to put in the system and they didn't fit. Now, Tristan has automated the creation of fluids. Let's have a look at this then. Fluid export bus. Exporting silicone. Brilliant. So, red cables. Does that mean that the red thingy uh, is on P2P? I don't think so. Um, please note, however, that we are likely to run out of channels, because this, if this has got seven channels here, that means this has got seven channels. This is only glass cable, because I didn't have enough string at the time to make smart cable. This is going to run out of channels. So, it's possible that we might need separate... Because this can, this can... You can just pull another line up here, right? So you can have another eight coming this way. That doesn't really matter, but it might be sensible to have a separate supply for um, fluids, because there's another one back there. Look. Oh, sensible to have a separate supply for fluids um, from the one that is producing these. But we set up more crafters, uh, more carpenters. So all of these are making a different thing, and they're being constantly supplied with the appropriate fluid. Now, the way these carpenters work, as we've mentioned, is that they have one recipe each, which means you get one recipe per interface each. So every single automated thing that requires carpenter requires a carpenter and an interface, which therefore requires channel in the bus. Why are there so many noises? <laughs> it's too loud. Um, and a fluid. So, you know, there's two ranks now. This one is going to be all the silicone ones. This one's going to be all the um, super glue ones. We might want to push this out a little bit so that we can get between them. Uh, that would be my recommendation. Uh, and then they, of course, will go into the interface there. It means another <laughs> servo for each one as well, because they don't automatically export. Gosh, blimney. There's not too much to say, to be honest, considering we did do quite, did do quite a lot. Um, another thing that we updated was the... Do you remember the ore automation, where we had pipes sending ore all the way over here? Now, Tristan thought that it would not be a good idea to send all of our ore... Um, over here via the ME system, because what is going to happen is it's going to clog up. Uh, if we have like a thousand iron, for example, all that will get, you know, pulverized and turned into ingots, which will go up there and then be pulled out and then go, no, they'll go away. Um, but when the storage fills up, this will keep going, and then that storage will fill up, and then that will have iron ingots in it, and then we won't be able to pulverize anything else. So I haven't hooked that one up. That's this one. But I have hooked up um, the other two. This one is doing stuff that we can make 
Oh, that one's making stuff that we make slag out of. Right? So this induction smelter here doubles up these ores and produces something that goes in this induction smelter here, i.e. rich slag, which triples these ores. I think that's how that works. So these are the important ones, so we're always exporting those. And I did go mining for some ovium, which is that one, and I found three. In that entire time that I went mining, I found three, and a lot of baddies, and I died several times. But that's being exported into there now. So, we, I still export these ones just because they keep that supply going, and then we don't get so many of them that it's a big problem if, if you know, they're not going to clog up, at least at this stage. And if they do start to clog up, we rethink our system, because we should have plenty of materials by then. Um, I, uh, there's a crafting terminal here for test purposes, which we can pick up from somewhere else. So these are simply just storage buses with a higher priority than the main storage buses. And they're on the same network as all the other terminals, which is the blue network, but I didn't put a blue cable on it because I was too lazy to go and get one. Um, which has got plenty of channels left on it, by the way. This one works the same way. It's got a priority of, uh, let's put 10. A priority of 10. So anything that arrives in the system from now on will, for preference, go into one of these drawers instead of the main drawers back there, and that will cause the whole system to produce ingots from them. And then this... Is that correct? That doesn't seem right. Well, Tristan built that, so it's on him. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> Surely that works. Because why would... Isn't that this? These ingots are now trying to go into that chest, surely. There's no ovium in there, look. So something worked. I don't know why those are stuck there. Anyway, that seems fine. We can't process these yet. Very well. What else has happened? Pete has done something. He's rearranged all of this over here. Now, if you recall... You would walk in here, and then those drawers would be over there. But, oh, they're over here. Ooh. He's got a cracking terminal on and a blue cable as well. So he's hooked this up to, again, the same P2P network that the terminals are on. And I believe what this is doing is, somewhere around here, he's got a constant supply of... Last time, remember, I was saying that you have to turn these into those. I was saying it was nine times. It's not. It's four, apparently. Four times. Um, so if we take this and put this here. This is how you do that. See how it turns into Prudentium, which I forgot about? Um, I'm not going to do it. That thing is slowly taking damage. Pete says that he has automated this, so I believe that what he's basically done is any overflow is being turned into one than the other. Um, I don't know how he's done it. I thought he was used... You can't use compacting drawers, because in order to turn one into the other, you need this uh, infusion crystal, which you can um, upgrade to a... There is a there is a master infusion crystal here. I wonder how expensive that is. Star metal, void stones, block of supremium, block of mana diamond. That's actually quite easy. So some of these are extremely expensive, and I've never heard of them. <laughs> but this you can use infinitely, which means you can automate this completely with a simple crafting recipe. So I'm not entirely sure what Pete's done over here, but he says he's done something. Uh, one of which is to hook the place up. Sorry about the path. There's your P2P. Ooh. Oh, I see. It's automated picking it. Okay. No. Oh. Mistake. Do, do. Don't forget about the... If you've not seen the dank null before, then there it is. And can I do this with this? Yes. Probably doing the 3x3 three three as well. Brilliant. So this is picking those. Let's have a look at this machine. Because I think this might have been what I intended the other one to be. This is a plant interactor, as you as you well know. So the plant interactor is probably what I should have put in the car park and didn't realise that it existed. <laughs> so maybe we change the car park up for some of those. Um, we have there's still a bit of a debate going on about this because we can't tell whether this is picking them or smashing them. I have seen it smash them, or so I believe, but also people have seen it pick up. <laughs> so it's off now anyway, and we still haven't set up the thing that turns them on again, but that's okay, we don't need it. Uh, what else has happened? 
final thing that really happened is that Mike has gone absolutely crazy and completed a bajillion tea quests, some of which I still have to hand in. <laughs> He's completed all the kitchen workshop quests, including zucchini bread. So that, I believe, is it. Now we're on the tier two kitchen quest line. No, nope, there's just the kitchen workshop. There you go. You're a master cook now. Not a master chef. There's lots and lots of quests, lots of things to hand in. I didn't hand in my uh, these ones because I went killing a lot of stuff, so I killed a lot of skeletons and stuff. So, brilliant. Uh, not much more to say. If I've missed anything out, tough because Lawrence hasn't made a video this week. Uh, probably. So come back next week, join us then, and we will see what we can... Oh, look at this. So this will be the fluid storage itself. Here's a fluid storage bus. Kind of cool, actually. I like the way it sort of just sticks out of the ground like that. Um, presumably for any overflow or just stuff... Pardon me. Any stuff that uh, is not used elsewhere. I tried to put one here. I don't know if this is hooked up. No, it's not hooked up anymore. For the water. We still have to set up, I think, a lot of um, recipes for... Because one of the problems with making all the stuff that we've got in the semi-automatic crafting is they're always asking for um, cells, you know, uh, made of water, water cells and things like that, and water buckets, which is what all those water buckets were for. If we can have as... Uh, all we need, really, is a fluid transposer that can accept a fluid and... A bucket and then give you back the thing but i don't know if ae2 will allow you to say that the liquid is part of a recipe so you can import and export the fluids from a to b but you have to set up a machine which has that fluid in it in order to put the fluid into something else automatically you can't just um you can't add it as the recipe you can't say i need 10 millibuckets of this fluid you have to put the thing in a thing that knows how to control its own fluid. So it's a little bit pesky like that. Um, but, you know, we're learning. What's that for? Anyway, that's all I have to say. Oh, I ate a lot of food. I wonder if I got an extra... How far am I from an extra... Um, an extra heart? Let's find, let's find out. There's a cow. Pete, there's a cow. Pete. Pete, there's a cow. Pete, there's a cow. Goodness me. <laughs> Why is there a cow? Give me the... I have to use an empty hand. Food book. 243, nearly there. Um, oh, I changed the things in my bow. So my bow was made of electrum, which was silly, because it turns out that in order for the electrum effects to work, you have to hit things with the bow, not shoot arrows with the bow. Um, so I replaced the parts of it. It's now made of um, wood and lumium. So the wood is giving it regrowth, which is good. It means it repairs itself slowly over time. And the lumium is giving it this glowing thing, which you've seen before, and now I realise what it is. It's lighting up entities that you can't... Look, what are you? Underground chickens. What the heck? <laughs> Why is this? Why is this a thing? Hey, there's chickens. Uh, I don't know if it highlights mobs. I did hear a zombie before. Maybe we can now find out where that dang zombie is that was grunting at me from over here. Maybe it's not there anymore. Uh, obviously, as you can see, we've uh, made a lot of progress in actually building this hut. <laughs> but I, I like this effect. It means that you can find caves and stuff, I think, in the, in the background through the distance. So we've got a lot of mining to do to try and find more ovium because that seems to be an important part of something. Um, but otherwise, keep playing Minecraft, keep keep digging, keep automating stuff, and we'll see where we end up. But thanks for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode and you'll join me on stream every Monday. I'm hoping next Monday I'll be able to make it because I'm moving house on Friday. <laughs> and the internet there is going to be terrible. So today, if you're watching this on the Tuesday that I release it, which is right now, in the evening I'm going to be doing a test stream from the office using 4G. I've already done a test stream from here using 4G and it was terrible. But if I can do a stream from the office on 4G, it means we don't need to upgrade the internet at the office so I can do these streams from there. Uh, otherwise, I might have to miss it because 
I won't have a decent internet connection until we do upgrade that thing. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll see you next week. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll see you this evening. Otherwise, I'll see you on these videos. I'll still play, but I won't stream, and then I'll do this video anyway. So I'll see you next week, come what may. Thanks for watching. Bye.